G'day, my name's Jason Johnson, I'm from Dynamic Australia. Today I'm in a secret location, we're going to be working with Joe Watson and cooking his favourite pre-game pasta. Yeah, Joe, how are you going? Thanks for, uh, Thanks for inviting well, me over, that's man. That's alright, uh, thanks for bringing all your tools along. <laughs> it's a lot better than when I left it. Yeah, good. Well, I'm looking forward today to, uh, I guess, get to know you a little bit about how you prepare yourself and, uh, you know, what you do, you know, pre-game. We're cooking sausage pasta tonight and it's, um, it's got a bit of protein in it as well, which is... Yeah pretty important for, for performance, so um, I've made sure that uh, you know the, the recipe is very simple. So you just sort of cook the, the sausages without them in the casing. You sort of brown them off for, I don't know, five minutes or so, Jono, and then, um, and then we take them out, let it cool, and then we'll, uh, we'll cook up some um, onion and garlic, and that'll be the base of the, uh, the sauce. Mum and Dad are, are very big foodies, so, and I, my sisters are as well, so I suppose I grew up around food, and i um, very lucky that Mum was a great cook, so. Um, you know, it's always nice. Once a week I head back there for a dinner. The housemates arrived at home. This is a standard procedure, Jono. He just comes home and says, where's dinner? So I have to... Uh... <laughs> this is what you do, mate, how are you? I'm good, Jono, how are you? Not too bad. We've uh, had some meals cooked through your company. Um, and you catered to all sort of, uh, not only the Essendon Football Club, but a few clubs. Since, I guess, the end of 2008, we've been trying to, you know, cater for, for a lot of sporting teams, um, providing sort of post-training, post-game nutrition and also we've got our retail product. There's not a lot of dishes that get done here so we just go by uh, what's available what's basis, available? John. These ones are probably too small but I, I think I've got a couple of bigger ones hidden away in here so we might, very, very simple, very white. We're not too worried about it here. We have to make do a lot of the times. So how much, how much pasta would you have? Like if, you know, you sort of want to try and obviously get, you know, X amount of carbohydrates out of a meal. You probably have one and a half bowls of that, I'd say, on the night before a game, depending on how hungry you are. So here we go. Not bad, Brian. Happy with that. It's a little bit hot. <laughs> That's good. It's mm. very nice, Joe. Well, there you go. Joe's favourite pre-game meal. Sausage ragu with penne pasta. Bon appetit. <laughs> Paddy Ryder is our studio guest. Now, Joe Watson obviously fancies himself in the kitchen. What are you like as a chef? Yeah, no good in the kitchen, but um, I'm not too bad on the barbie, so I'll get out there every now and then and cook up a mean barbie. But uh, Heath Hocking at the footy club cooks a mean lasagna. Um, I've heard from a few of the boys, so yeah, he's one of the one of the guys who cooks good. A great start to the season for the Bombers. Two wins from two. What's the mood like around the club? Yeah, it's very very exciting, and um, we, we're happy to have the wins on board. Um, we haven't had you know three zip at the start of the season for ten years, I think now. So it's good to get the wins on board. Your own form is sensational. 46 hit-outs on the weekend. When David Hill went down, you had to assume sole ruck responsibilities. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah um, it's my, my favourite position, so um, I just uh, went in there and just went about my business as I normally do and try and get the, get the ball down to the midfielders and let them go to work. It was a very similar scenario to Anzac Day three years ago when David also went down, and that was the best game of your career. Did memories of that come back to you as you were playing the game? Yeah, it brought back some memories. Um, yeah, I just wanted to put in a good performance and um, you know, I was happy to, to get the same outcome as Anzac Day. Did you have to conserve energy towards the end of the game, just knowing that there was really no other option, that you were the man? Yeah, you've got you to gotta be careful with um, how you... You've got to be smart when you're running and stuff. And um, a couple of my teammates came up to me and um, sort of pulled me back and made sure that I was conserving a bit of energy for the end of the game when we need it. Saturday night is going to be a huge game. Dustin Fletcher's 350th. Your locker's right beside his. What's he like as, as a teammate and as a footy player? Yeah, he's a great man to, to be able to walk in the footy club and sit next to. Uh, uh, he's, one of, you know, he, um, he's very down to earth and um, he just goes about his business. He's never complaining and it's, um, it's pretty special to be able to you know, play, play in the same team as him. You would have played alongside him in the back line when you started your career as a defender. Did he teach you much or is he a guy you kind of learn off by watching? Yeah, he, uh, he leads by example and um, he, yeah, he doesn't say too much, but uh, when he does, you, you certainly listen to him. How do you get away from the pressures of being an AFL footballer, Paddy? Because you were really young when you first came to Melbourne from WA. Yeah, I think you've got to have outlets outside of footy, so uh, 
I like to, to spend time with my family and, and my mates and, you know, and enjoy um, you know, living in Melbourne. So uh, it take, takes your mind off the footy and, and you don't really have to, to worry about it too much. You've got a two-year-old daughter, Liliana, and I understand she comes along and watches the footy sometimes. Yeah, she sits in the crowd. Um, beautiful baby she is and um, she, she certainly knows knows what's going on and she picks me out um, when I'm out on the field so it's yeah it's nice. At two years old she uh, must be keeping her hands full or she must be running a muck at home. Yeah she's always in the in the cupboards and um, always looking for chocolates and lollies. Um, I've always got a sneak a couple mum her mum doesn't um, isn't too happy with it at, at most times but yeah. Your votes on the Essendon website decide the true value bomber of the week. The round two nominations are Brent Stanton, who continued his good 2012 form with 25 disposals and a couple of handy goals. Goes to Stanton, who plays on and kicks a goal. Angus Momfrey showed plenty of courage running back with the flight of the ball. Second bomber comes in and takes a strong mark. Monfrey's a long way from the forward 50, but he was required then and did a great job. And Leroy Jetta was a live wire, bagging a career-high four goals, including the sealer. Takes him on, he bounces and finishes. It's Essendon's day. And congratulations to Nicholas, who correctly selected Leroy Jetta as the round two True Value Bomber. You're now in the season-ending draw to win the True Value Solar Energy System, valued at almost $3,000. See EssendonFC.com.au for full terms and conditions. Skip Thompson here from Kia. It's a big year for the rookies, so how are they stacking up? Elliot Kavanagh. Yeah, Skip. Uh, welcome to the Bombers, mate. Thanks very much. What was it like when you got drafted to the, the almighty Bombers? Definitely a great feeling. Yeah. Obviously growing up bragging for them, yeah. All right, good. You mm, were a Desmond man before. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Bombers through and through. And what do you think your strengths are? Do you think, uh, are you a good kick or are you more of a runner? Or? Oh, I'm midfield, so I'm midfield. On, a, on a wing, basically. I'm a bit, bit skinnier, I guess. Oh, so, yeah? yeah, good. Bloody proud of you. Oh, thanks. Is there a fly on my face? <laughs> yes, there is. Oh, we'll leave it there. Yeah, sounds good. Lachlan Del Gleach, have I said it right? Yeah, no, that's all right. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. What's it like being drafted? Oh, it's fantastic. Dream come true. Um, yeah. Barracks for Collingwood growing up, but... Barracks for Collingwood? Some of my family barracks for Essendon, so I suppose right. it, it wasn't, wasn't as bad, but just oh, being here now, be it's... happy playing for the Bombers. Yeah, definitely being here now, I wouldn't look back at all. It's a bit of a daydream, I suppose, when, yeah. I, when I first turned up and walked in and saw... Yeah, Bomber Thompson and Hurdy and, and Joe yeah. Watson, but once I got to know him a little bit, it was just, you get, you get used to it and, and they make you feel really welcome. I'm a rookie, so just looking forward to hopefully getting promoted to senior list and, and getting a well, game. That's it. You It'd beauty. be fantastic. Nick O'Brien, how are you, mate? Hey, Skip, how are you, mate? Pretty good, buddy. I've always been a forward uh, growing up, sort of been a, a marking forward, I guess, so try and kick a few goals, but once you get... You a get, bit of height on you? Yeah, a little bit. I guess you... Um, they seem to be a lot bigger down here once you get down with the with the older boys, so I'll just try and slot in where I can, mate. I'm happy to play any role down sure. here, so Absolutely. yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. I'll just try and play my best footy, whatever level I'm playing, and uh, try and enjoy it and yeah. with the boys, so it's good. Yeah, yeah, you just keep working hard and That's it. you never know, mate. That's it, mate. Could hard work. Brownlow one day. Hard work will get you there, so. That's right. Yeah. Coming up, Melksham and Zaharakis take us on a Japanese adventure. If you can learn by the end of that trip what it says, I'll pay you a thousand yen. And Carl Remus pulls one out of the bag in a bomber demolition. And Remus can sniff an eight. Oh, Remus, is. he can sniff an eight. Look at him. He looks Look up. Goals at the top. Jesus, that's great. What's in it? Well, Jake, I think it's filled with a very scientific formula. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. It's good for your digestive system. You have no idea, do you? Yeah, no, no idea. <laughs> well, I wonder where it's from. I think it's from Japan. We should go to Japan. The lads landed in Japan hoping to find the secret to your cult, but soon discovered it wasn't going to be easy. If you can learn by the end of that trip what it says, I'll pay you a thousand yen. 
tired from a long flight, they were told about a place called Meiji Shrine, where people from all over Japan go to purify their soul, cleanse themselves and relax. Is this a wedding or a funeral? The movie is pretty slow. It's like a real summer mood right now. We've got to um, throw a coin in and say a prayer. Don't tell me what you say. But I know you wish for wish to become as good as you one day. While Meiji's shrine was awesome, Jake and Zaka were still no closer to finding out where Yukuk comes from. But they did learn about their rugby team. There's an Aussie bike out there that he sets up all the plays and uh, kick her and stuff like that. The team thought it had lost when the opposition ran in a try in the dying seconds. But a forward pass on the try line handed them the victory. <laughs> After yeah, swapping trade secrets, Jake tried out for a new job. So day one was done, but the lads weren't any closer to achieving their mission. Time to find a hotel and start again tomorrow. And you can see the full episode of Jake and Zaka's Japanese adventure on the Bombers website. Well, Paddy Ryder joins me in the studios. And Paddy, did you get over to anywhere overseas uh, over your summer break? Yeah, I went to, went to America and um, spent a bit of time in Las Vegas. Uh, didn't gamble over there, um, just spent a bit of time with the with a few of the teammates, so that was nice. I understand a few of the boys are poker fans, so it would have been a great place to go to. Yeah, I think a couple of the boys went in and had a go at the poker, but uh, it's fair to say the players over there are a lot better than the boys over here. <laughs> what about Anzac Day obviously approaching and such a, a special day for you given your great success in, in the game three years ago? We touched on it before, but what kind of memories does it hold for you and a significance in your career? Yeah, I just feel uh, really privileged to be able to, to get out there firstly and, and play against Collingwood on that massive day. Uh, just representing the footy club, but um, yeah, I'd, I just want to get get out there and you know stick to the basics, and hopefully we come away with the win. You've struggled for consistency at sometimes during your career. I understand you had a, a conversation with James Hurd last year that has really resonated with you and, and been a, a bit of a, a board to propel yourself to some success this year. Yeah, um, I just spoke to Hurdy. Um, we just wanted to to get back to the basics. Um, I, uh, with a lot of the pressures that go along with footy, um, I've probably put too much pressure on myself and um, I was, you know, wasn't fully concentrating on, on footy at the time, so it was all about getting back to training and, and just working really hard and getting that belief back that, um, I, that I am a good player and I, I can you know, play footy. And do you look at that Anzac Day as the benchmark for you and something that just trying to propel more of your performances up to that level? Yeah, it's all about, um, you know, being a good player for the team and um, you know give it, getting in there if I'm playing in the rucks, it's getting my hand on the ball. If it's playing down forward, it's um, you know taking marks, making a contest, and kicking goals. Now there's been a few injuries at Bomberland over over the last few weeks, but probably none more bizarre than the latest to Heath Hocking. Can you tell us what happened to him because it's very very strange. Yeah, I'm not sure not sure what happened. I rocked up this morning and he's had a couple of stitches in the face. Um, <laughs> He's um, been bitten by a, by a dog. I'm um, not too sure. Kyle Reamer's dog, I understand. Yeah. So his own teammate's dog is um, biting him. That's no good. A, a couple of stitches, we understand. He looks set to play on the weekend on um, the Gold Coast, which is good news. But he's having rotten luck after that round one concussion. Yeah, he's, um, he's tough as nails. So um, there's no doubt we'll have him back in the team this week. Well, we've got the home truth for the week, which is where Bombers fans can uh, tweet in and, and give a question. Shannon Emerton would like to know what you enjoy doing outside of football and what you plan to do after footy. Uh, I, at the moment, it's um, uh, spending time with my daughter and, and my partner. Uh, I love, love to spend time with them outside footy and also my mates as well. Uh, Alwyn, uh, Leroy, I'd like to play a bit of golf with them. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's nice to, to get away. Well, Shannon wins a Antler luggage pack uh, valued at $500 just for asking that question of you, Paddy. So congratulations to Shannon. And we can't let you go without asking you the very important question about when you will be re-signing with Yesenden Football Club. Yeah, the, my management are uh, hard working at the moment. So um, they're, along with the club, they're looking, 
looking at um, sorting a deal out ASAP, hopefully. So um, all my mates at the club, this is where I want to want to stay and play my footy. So hopefully that gets done ASAP. Well, we look forward to that happening. Thank you very much for joining us on this week's edition of The Hangar. Thanks, Sarah. Play on advantage. Shot at goal from Remus. Can you believe it? Spectacular. My feelings is going into the game was just hopefully to play my role really, but the pieces fell my way and I was lucky to get on the end of a few. It's Hallett again from the pocket, rolls it, Remus, and he goals it. Sparkling start for Thomas. Not only Gold Coast had just won their first game, we knew they'd be up and about from the start, so we just had to stick to what we wanted to do and play how we wanted to play, and we knew eventually we'd get on top and run away with it. Toy goes up, Zaharakis, they're still going. Handball superb. Remus for number three. Well, it's good to have him back. Leroy put him a few on my chest in the goal square, which is good. I think I owed him a few for the rest of the year. As the game pans out, hopefully it goes your way, and luckily for enough, enough for me, it did. Jenna sits it up long. Race on goal square, Remus! I heard he just gave me the advice just to stay stay in the game and don't get too far ahead of it and just keep playing my role, which I did. Oh, he he is. Is. He stiffen eight. Look at him. He Look looks at up, goes up and up. Only Look in the world of dreams. When you're hot, you're hot, Ru. <laughs>